Wanted to apologize for the bad audio quality of this video. My laptop decided to use the built-in microphone rather than my external one, so it's a little bit worse than usual, but uh, enjoy. Hey there everybody, and welcome to another Pixel for Life video tutorial. So I wanted to do a long series, well somewhat long, on using vector objects and going through and teaching you exactly how to use them and all the different tools. And we were going to create something pretty cool, but I've been just too busy lately to whip out those tutorials. So I decided, decided rather than doing nothing, um, we're going to do something a lot simpler, which is going to be some vector buttons, website buttons. And you probably have seen these quite a bit lately. They're referred to as CSS5 or, or CSS3 or HTML5 buttons or Web 2.0, whatever those terms mean. But um, I just call them cool buttons and common buttons that you see a lot. Um, so just to start off, we're going to create a new layer. And when using vector objects, you want to stay in this row here or use just this pen tool. And we're going to just stay in this row and go to the rounded rectangle tool. And you've probably used this before, but um, maybe you did some pixel stuff over it using a paintbrush or something, which totally kills the whole point of vectors. But um, anyhow, we're just going to use this. So the first button, we're going to drag out something like this. And I'm going to keep it on a radius of four pixels. And then we are going to create a text layer and I'm going to select over it, make it center my text and make it white and I'll write like pixel for life and then let's make that bigger and bold because bold is awesome cool so let me just drag that down to center it vertically looking spiffy okay so now that we have that, we need to colorize this button. And with vector objects, you always want to use the layer styles <clears throat> because everything else is pixels. So to do the layer styles, you double click on here and you're working strictly inside of this. So you can add a gradient, which is what we're going to do. Um, let me just, well, let's start all over and just pick our own colors. Let's go with um, maybe a cool blue. Let's try out that one, and then let's do something somewhat similar, but maybe a little bit darker. Like that. And then I'm going to reverse it so the dark's on the bottom. I'm going to scale this up to, I don't know, 120. Just so it's very, very slight. Maybe we can even make this, make this a little bit lighter. Something like that. Okay, now what I want to do is add a stroke. And let me just show you one thing. And if I go to the stroke and I want to select a color, let's say I want to select this dark blue. If I click it, it's just going to use black because our vector object is black, even though we have this gradient on it. So to fix that, let's just close out of this and then go back into it. And when we go to stroke, we can now select that darker blue color. I, I don't know if this is some weird mistake with Photoshop or what, but that is the workaround I have found. So I'm just going to make it one pixel. All right, so now that we have this border that's going to be the same color, the dark color as the bottom, we can add a lighter stroke to the top, which is kind of like a highlight. So we're going to either, we could either do that by drawing it in, creating a new layer, but that's too much work. Um, what I like to do is actually go to Bevel and Emboss, click this, and make sure you are on 90 degrees. And it's tucked away a little bit from the top, so you go to 90, and then drag this little thing downwards, or else you'll get uh, uh, some problems. So just just listen to me and do it. Thank you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> do what you want, but that's that's what I recommend doing. So I like to turn down the shadow, because um, I don't like the bottom being too dark. So I turn that all the way down, and then the size, I put that to zero. And as you can see, you get a very very slight line right here, but it looks quite nice. Now if this white line is too strong for you, you can always turn down uh, turn down this opacity and make it to what you're looking for. I'm going to leave it at about 75 just because I don't know uh, if you can see it or not with the screencast. Now if I hide this stroke, 
you can see exactly why I put it there. With it, you can see that uh, the white line. Without it, it kind of blends in a little bit too much. So now you can click OK. And let's stylize this text a little bit. And there's a couple of things you can do with it. Um, the first thing I do is I change it off a of multiplier. I don't like multiply. And I keep it black. And then I change the distance to 1. Bring the spread all the way up so it makes the edges not feathered. And the size, I bring it to 0. So then you have a very slight drop shadow right there. And you can mess, turn off use global light, or else you can mess up the different angles of things. So you can try with you know negative 90 or whatever, and it looks like it's pressed in. Or you can have it to the side and whatnot. You can play with, with it. I usually like to have 90 degrees, so it's kind of bulging out, and it stands out quite a bit. So, all right, so one last step for this is adding a little bit of gloss to the blue background. Now, I know gloss is kind of out, but uh, I like to hang on to it as long as possible. So I make it very subtle, but I think it does a very nice job. So I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, I create a new layer, and I grab this rectangle marquee tool. Oh, wait a second. Good catch. That's, uh, that's pixels. So we want to use vectors. So I'm going to grab, actually, this rectangle tool. And, um, well, actually, I set myself up for trouble. Let's think about this for a second. If I, uh, if I do the rectangle tool and then I mask it out, that's going, the mask is going to be pixels. So if I scale it, it's going to cause problems. So to fix this, what you have to do, actually, is duplicate this layer. And then for the bottom one, I'm going to grab the FX and delete it. And then right-click this one and go to create clipping mask and you can see this arrow um, it's clipping ma it's clipped or attached to this one so if I lower this opacity it'll lower the top opacity as well now the reason I duplicated this is because this one has styles and when you have a clipping mask attached um, an object attached to another a vector object that has a uh, layer styles it inherits it so if that doesn't make sense you can mess with it and figure out what I mean for yourself. So um, now as you can see our stroke disappeared when we did that. That's because the stroke is on the outside not the inside. So what we have to do actually is double click this one and go to stroke and do one pixel and attach it right there. And there you go. Now we have the stroke. So remember this. No blending styles on this unless it is outside of the width. So uh, drop shadow or stroke is fine and then the top one will have the gradient and all that so the reason I did that is because I want to create a new layer a rectangle with the vector this time and select this whole thing well go to about half of half of this object right here and I have it as white and then I'm gonna right click it and go to create clipping mask as you can see it's gonna cut it out to around that shape and here, I can lower the opacity. As I said, I, I keep it very, very subtle. And if this, uh, these gray lines for guides of the vector get in your way, you can click Command or Control H, and it will hide it. So it looks like I have to bring this object down a little bit, about right there, and then lower that opacity to about, I don't know, 6. So as you can see, it's very, very subtle, but I think it looks quite nice. And this text is incentive for some reason. There we go. Alright, so that's the first button. I'm going to group that together and name it button 1. And we'll put that off to the side. Alright, so now we're pretty much going to do the exact same thing, except this is another style that I see pretty often. And I think it was um, originated with the pretty popular designer Raji. And I'm pretty sure he started it, or he's the first person that I noticed do this. And it's kind of like a uh, embossed button. So again, I'm going to start off with this rounded rectangle tool. And just do whatever shape. And I'm going to duplicate this layer. And then right click this and go to create clipping mask. So we're going to do the same thing as we did last time. Just do it ahead of schedule. So let me show you another way of creating gradients. The first way you can do it is... Um, on this bottom layer, you can double click and choose a color, maybe like an orange. 
and then bring up the opacity to 100. Same thing with this. And then double click this one, and we're going to bring the fill all the way down, and that's this top layer right here. Bring the fill all the way down, and then I'm going to go to gradient. And we're going to leave it at black and white, but we can change the blend mode to either multiply, and then we can lower the or, uh, lower the opacity. And you can see you get a normal kind of gradient, or we can change it to overlay, and we get something that looks even cooler. So I'm going to do overlay, bring the scale to 150, and get that something that looks good, like that. And then um, what I want to do is do a couple of things, and I need to figure out what order to do this in. Um, let's start off with drop shadow so you can kind of see the effect that I'm going for. I'm going to change it to normal again. Distance, let's leave it 5. Um, oops, uh, we're on the wrong layer. So get rid of that, cancel that, click OK. Double click this bottom one, go to drop shadow, and then let's do the same thing. Normal for black, opacity 100, <clears throat> distance 5, spread 100, and size, let's try 1. Um, let's go with zero. That looks better. Um, maybe one. All right, we'll go with one. And again, if the if the guidelines are getting in your way, just hide them with Control H. That looks bad. Let's go with zero. <laughs> I'm back and forth. Okay, so we're gonna leave it at that, but we're gonna change this color to a dark orange rather than black. So I'm gonna select that orange and just go down to like that. All right, click OK. So if you're still following along, we, um, we have a drop shadow on this bottom layer. And then this top layer is the exact duplicate, and it uh, has the gradient on it, and it has a clipping mask applied to it. All right, so let's double click this top one. And we're going to add a stroke to it to give it some more realistic look. And now you can see the stroke doesn't appear, and that's because, as I was saying, this is on the outside. We need to change this to inside. And you can see it comes back. Let's go to one pixel, and maybe some of you uh, are about to learn something new. Brace yourself. You see right here where we normally select the color? We can go to fill type and change this to gradient. As you can see, it's white on top, black on the bottom. So I'm going to bring this to negative 90, so it's black on top, white on the bottom. And then we're going to select um, a gradient. I'm going to go with a light orange for that bottom. And then for the, oops, that's the top, sorry. I'm going to go with a dark orange for the, uh, I'm getting all mixed up. This is the top, dark orange top, light orange bottom. There we go. So you can see it has kind of like a glossy look on the bottom. That's exactly what I'm going for. I'm going to click OK. And this gradient is kind of bothering me, but um, I'll leave it. All right, so we got that. Click OK. And that's pretty much the look that we're after. Um, let's create a text. Let's uh, go to the text tool and then just drag out a selection for the uh, the same width as a button and we'll go pixel for life again. <coughs> Click enter and let's drag that down so it's in view. Looking good. Alright, so this time I want to do something a little bit different. I'm going to make the text um, I don't know. Let's try. Let's try a dark gray. Let's see what that looks like. And then this time, uh, I'm going to go to drop shadow, and go to normal again. But this time, I'm going to change it to white. Change the distance to one. This to 100. This to zero. Same thing. And then, hmm. Let's try the angle different. Oops. There you go. See, I have used global light and I don't want that checked. So let's go back to 90, uncheck global light, and let's see if that looks any better. No, it doesn't. <laughs> let's go back to 90 degrees, and we're going to leave it at this, but let's try a different font color. Um, hmm. <laughs> it's so hard to, figure, to pick a color, and that that doesn't look too bad. All right, we'll go with that. Let's go to Drop Shadow and maybe change this to Overlay. And that looks a little bit better. And then we can even make this font size bigger. Maybe 18. Looking good. 
center that a little bit better. And again, I'm going to add a gloss to this because I love gloss. So I'm going to create a new layer, grab this rectangle tool, drag it out to the center of the object, and erase the effects, drag it to the garbage can, right click this and go to create clipping mask. Now nothing's appearing because our fill is set to zero. So bring that to 100 and bring the opacity down to, I don't know, let's try five and see what that looks like. And again, if this border gets in your way, control H and that looks good to me, maybe even four. So here we go, let me group these together and you can see our two different kind uh, kinds of buttons. Uh, they're both quite popular actually nowadays. If you look around you'll probably see these used on pretty much every website. It's kind of sad but th they look nice so I'm, I'm alright with it. So hopefully this got you learning something new about vectors. Maybe you'll get started and create some cool, cool buttons with it. If you have any questions feel free to drop it in the comment. Um, if you want to see what we're doing, you can add us on Twitter, which is twitter.com forward slash pixel for life. And if you have any questions, comment or PM me. Thanks for watching, and see you soon.